Okay, so Sigal, uh, Sigal Kletter, originally from Israel, uh, she has lived in the Bay Area for over 30 years, and she is an educator with experience in different Jewish institutions, including leading tours at the Contemporary Jewish Museum as a docent. And we are enjoying Sigal once a month for the, uh, she's making lectures for our healthy aging community and also to the Israeli community. And today, and I, I hope you'll enjoy. I we are really love. She's actually full time here, but she's a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, and we really encourage you to. I mean, Sigal talks, but uh, it's very interactive. Sigal, maybe you can explain how. We I talk. will say. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. So you tell me when you want me to start. Now. Okay. <laughs> Please. If you're so, ready. Welcome to everyone. And my name is Sigal. And I am in the Bay Area for many years. And really, the presentations are all interactive. Um, in my past, I'm a, a teacher for many years. So if I ask a question, it's not a, a question to uh, you know uh, fail you in the, the next test, but it's a it's a question that helps me move forward to the next slide, to the next topic, to the next whatever I do. It helps me move along. Um, I have to tell you, I'm I'm a teacher. I'm not a art expert in any way. Uh, so your opinion is as important as mine, and that's the baseline where we start. And um, I see that you all have your microphone off, that you're muted. So I suggest to open it because uh, whenever you feel like, go in and um, start talking. That's how we get started. And I'll uh, share my screen. And that's what we're doing today. So uh, we're working on contemporary visual Jewish artists in the United States. Um, and we're going to see what are some of those um, artists uh, present us. And I just want to give a little introduction. Um, the 20th century, the era of 20th century, is really characterized with some amazing visual artists, uh, contemporary artists, um, artists that are famous for artist, artistic innovations and uh, ones that leave a lot of impact on the 20th and 21st century. Uh, many of them carried a Jewish surname and some had Jewish culture or religious root. So um, we're going to see how it's going to play in the art scene. Now, the big question is, is there a Jewish art? Um, you know, Jews today are made of a 2.4 about percent of the general um, Citizens, citizens of the United States. We have a, about 331 and a half million people living in the United States. If you think about it, 2.4% is very small. It's about almost seven and a half million. But in the 50s and the 60s, um, there were about 5 million uh, Jews here in the United States. So that's, that's not a lot. And they left a lot of uh, um, impact and influence on general art. So the question is, is there a Jewish art? What do you think? Um, 
no response. איזה יופי שהיו. Maybe. <laughs> uh, there's themes in Jewish art um, or art made by Jewish people, I suppose. Um, but there's definitely outliers. Okay. So let's... What? Oh, sorry. Let's say, think about some really big names that I assume most of us know from... Um, Mark Chagall. <laughs> Mark Chagall wasn't American. He was just in America for a short while. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have Philip Gaston and we have Barnett Newman and Lee Kreisner. Uh, we have uh, Adolf Gottlieb and uh, Roy Lichtenstein now and George Segal. So really a lot of them. The question is, what, was, what made their art Jewish or not Jewish? So aside from their Jewish birth, uh, what makes certain artists Jewish? And what elements would you expect to define art as a Jewish art? So what do you expect to find in a Jewish art? Jewish motifs. Like? You know, for example, Hanukkiot and all the Agadot. You know. Yofi, good. What else? Um, maybe things from the history, like stories or like things from the Bible time or stories about the wars we had or holidays. Great. Like, All right. Know. So we're looking for some elements <laughs> that we refer as Jewish or we know that they are from the Jewish history, Jewish culture or Jewish religion. Um, it can uh, be a subject matter. It can be maybe a feeling or a mood that makes you think about Jewish content. It can be expression of Jewish racial characteristic, like what would you think? If you'd see someone with a, a stramel, a painting with a, str a stramel and the pass on the side, would it be a Jewish character in the painting? I think we can agree that it is. Um, we have, of course, objects that we know, like, uh, as you say, the Hanukkah or Magen David, that are symbols and part of our ritual. We have expression of different cultural values. Maybe colors, like what colors could be identified with Jewish art? So maybe black and white or blue and white? Because? Well, since Israel was established, so blue and, uh, blue and white. Okay. And I think maybe, maybe the, the black is more the traditional. Um, talit, yes. The talit and the, um, you know, what, what the more religious people are wearing on their everyday life. The very religious one, yes. And the question is, can we recognize art as a Jewish art, not as art, as Jewish art by its visual appearance or visual context? So I'm going to give you a little tease. Um, what do you see? This is a painting of, what do you think? It's like haystacks. Haystacks um, in a nice landscape, a nice summer day. Um, this one, this uh, 
painting is from 1899 and it's a field with a haystack. Anyone wants to guess who, are, who is the artist? Let's move on. It's not a guessing. Here's another uh, landscape painting. It's from 1890 or 91. What's in this landscape? Poppies. Poppies and? Maybe, maybe. a village. A village. Mm -hmm. Is there a haystack here? There is. It reminds me of Monet. <laughs> ah, beautiful. It is Monet. Oh, is it? No. Um, <laughs> and it's called Wheat Stacks. Okay, so was Monet Jewish? No. Ah, so now the question, who is the other one that had the haystack? It's Pissarro. Uh, Pissarro was a painter in uh, France. I um, love him. He's amazing, I think. He's a Jewish painter. And he was somehow a little outcast because he was Jewish, um, especially after the Dreyfus affair in 1899 in France. And the question is, looking at those paintings, can you determine which one is a Jewish art and which one is not a Jewish art? No, not no, really. Really not, because there's nothing to do with Jewish or not Jewish. Um, Okay, so let's run ahead. Uh, we're going to meet uh, those two um, gentlemen. They're very prominent and uh, leading 20th century American art critics. One is a uh, Harold Rosenberg and the other one is uh, Cecil Greenberg. Um, and being Jewish, played a central role in both their um, public and private identity. And they both were very much against the idea of um, Jewish art. Um, and we'll see in a minute why. Um, Harold Rosenberg, um, was invited to give a lecture when the Jewish Museum in New York opened. And he presented this question, is there a Jewish art? And then he said, um, this work inspired by the will to identity um, has a, constituted a new art by Jews, which, though not a Jewish art, is a profound Jewish expression at the same time that is, it is loaded with meaning for all people of the era. What do you think he's saying here? So we are- Jewish in art is the, for everyone. That art is for everyone, yes. That you, if you're Jewish and you make art, like a distinction between that and calling something Jewish art. Okay. Right? So if you are Jewish and you happen to be a good artist that is presented as an art, is it going to be called Jewish art? So what do you think? If you're uh, an artist, w w would you like to have the title a Jewish artist? No, I mean, in the first, uh, in the plenary talk, you know, we were saying there are Jews of all kinds of all over the place. So we are the same as other people. Sometimes we are artists and scientists and uh, it's not necessarily Jewish art. It's, we're expressing the artistic uh, feeling or capability, that's it. Now, that's right. if you happen to have a motif that is Jewish, 
maybe you can call it Jewish art. Fantastic. And you said it very nicely. We are individuals. And because of that, we have each one of us look at his Jewish identity a little different. But we don't want to be uh, judged only on this Jewish specific identity. We have other identities. We all are multi identities uh, place. So Rosenberg uh, continues and says, as foreigners somewhat independent from the mainstream, um, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, as a foreigner somewhat independent from the mainstream, Jewish and immigrant artists could better create as individuals and create artworks loaded with meaning for all people. That's exactly what you said. Um, and by creating as individual, we universal appeal, they helped inaugurate a genuine, a, a genuine American art. And for what could be more American than being ruggedly individual? Um, we have to remember that America is the freedom of being individual. And here, even though you're an immigrant or you're a son to an immigrant, you're not the only Jewish immigrant. There are immigrants from other uh, cultures and other countries. You bring your individual uh, into your art. So now we're gonna look at some artists, all Jewish artists, and see what, um, what they brought to the table here. Oy vey, what is it? <laughs> Inquisition it? torture. It's, it's a torture, absolutely. Inquisition. <laughs> it makes wrinkles. <laughs> yes, so. But what was it originally? Let's start with that. An iron. An iron. It's a flat iron. That's right. Um, you know, my generation, I don't think, remembers what it is. Definitely younger generation. Uh, you had to, to put those iron on the oven top to, to get heated. But this artist named Main Ray, um, he added something to the flat iron here. He added those nails or hacks, or as you said, it's a torture. Um, and he also called it cadeau. Someone knows a little French? Cadeau is hat, I think. It's a present. It's a present, it's a gift. Um, well, we're looking at it. I don't know if we can call it a gift. Uh, while you iron your clothes, you're going to turn it into peppers. I mean, rip it apart. Um, so what does he want to do here? Well, you could, you could look at it as irony, which is kind of funny to say. Because in my mind, when I first saw it, well, I was just remembering we had the um, International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Yes. So, you know, they put um, tattoos on people. They had mm -hmm. to use the instruments to do that. And so this is putting pressure on people and making them conform. And the gift is sort of a, um, not, not a true gift, but, you know, a, a not so subtle statement that this is how some people were treated and you know his commentary on that basically nice your association went really to to but it's good that's what it meant to do it meant to confront you with this and look for what do you think what do you see what do you observe so man ray was really um uh, looking at uh, Duchamp, actually, to take uh, uh, ordinary items and uh, use it some, somehow differently as art. Um, 
But here, uh, Man Ray uh, took it to the garment, really, uh, um, industry. Mm. Uh, who worked with the garment industry in the beginning of, of uh, Jews sitting in, uh, coming to New York? Oh, the shirtwaist factories and all that? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. And uh, many call, you know, we call it the schmates uh, uh, factories because so many Jews worked in those factories, um, including uh, uh, the two parents uh, of Men Ray. Um, so maybe he refers to something in, in the history of Jews. Um, but only if we know all the details, we can make some assumptions, but it's not a must. Um, yeah, but if it was from the factories, they were terrible working conditions for the people. Okay. They worked. So maybe there's a commentary on that. Great. So now that you know that uh, Men Ray was born Jewish, that both his parents worked in, um, in the garment factories. Do you think it's a Jewish art? Well, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would label it that, but more um, a, a, a sensitivity to <laughs> Jewish themes or Jewish concerns, maybe. Okay, great. So let's move on. Um, this is um, an artist that was born in Lithuania. Uh, actually, he was born um, and, and came here uh, with his parents. Um, his name is Jacques Lifshitz. Um, he was born as Heim Jack of Lifshitz, but we all know him as a Jacques Lifshitz. Um, what do you notice about those, uh, those artworks? What, um, what style do you see here? I think they both had something hanging on the back of somebody else. Okay. They're either they're there to be the supportive person or they've got a burden hanging over them. Correct. So the first one, actually, let me go back. Um, as you could see, the first one are two people and he called it the couple. The second one he called a mother and a child. Would you say that there is anything Jewish in here? Or we just enjoy what we see? So let's move on. Um, this is a much more, um, it's later in life that he did this one and he called it Hagar. Anyone knows what's the story of Hagar? Yeah, she was sent out into the wilderness with Ishmael. That's right. So first of all, she was a servant to who? Sarah. She was servant to Sarah. Sarah is one of our four mothers. Um, and she bore a child to who? Abraham. To Abraham, which is, you know, the, the first yeah. of our patri patriarchs. Um, and here is Hagar. Um, it's hard to see the, the details. Can you see any details at all? Or what sense do you get from this sculpture? Is she breastfeeding? 
That's what I see. Yeah. Nice. So you mm -hmm. see, you see the mother, you see hand, and you see, do you see a small a child or a face of a small child? Great. So again, it's a mother and we do get a sense of a, some kind of a struggle. And, uh, and we expect mother to struggle on many levels, um, of course, of worry is the first thing. But um, here it's the struggle. Now, the question is just knowing that he took this story from the Bible, does that make it a Jewish art, a Jewish sculpture? Or it has a universal, um, universal uh, concept of a mother and a child and the struggle to keep him alive? Both. I don't think you would know offhand looking at it that it would be Jewish in particular. That's right. Except it's for the name, right? Yes, but could uh, someone who reads the Bible and is not Jewish refers refer to Hagar as a struggling mother? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Sigal, another thing, um, there is for if it is in art everybody interpret it differently correct so it doesn't if they even if they don't know you know you're using your experience your past and you put into the nice. art that you're that you see correct so, so i don't i mean you can have different from different origins and everybody will take it to his own thing so that's, that's right nice. and nicely said uh, Sagit, you know, my mother uh, always kept saying that uh, a person, wherever they go, they bring themselves along. Exactly. And that means they bring their experience, their past, their knowledge, their uh, what they heard from their parents, uh, their memories, everything goes into that. And that's how we interrupt, uh, interpret things, because if it's not part of our past, we won't be able to uh, to look at it at the same way. Like Correct. Else. Correct. And that's <laughs> what makes us unique and individuals. By the yes. way, I was just talking to the phone to, because Connie tried to uh, join us I, and I see an iPhone. Connie, is this you? OK, good. You, you've made it. Okay, Good. so let's, <clears throat> let's keep going. This is um, Alexander um, Lieberman. Um, I saw this this summer at uh, the Kingstorm uh, Center in New York. What is it? What do you think it is? It looks like a broken lipstick tube. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So he gave it the, the title Adam. Mm -hmm. Knowing the, the title, does it make any changes in how you relate to it? Not necessarily. Uh, he loves working with uh, steel uh, sculptures. Um, it takes him a long time to do that. Um, there's another one from uh, the Storm, the Storm King Center. What name would you title it? The second one, right? Yeah. I don't know, it's a weird it's a name. It's hard to look at it, huh? It's a, so he called it Gates of Hope. Do you see any hope coming out from here? Of course. Of course, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we all, as we said, we all bring our own impression and we look at it differently. But just because he's called Alexander Lieberman, doesn't make it necessarily Jewish, Jewish. and we don't know his 
Jewish background. However, he lived a long, long life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, this is another one of a uh, Lieberman. It's called Faith. It's all white from different um, uh, corners. You, you see a it a little differently. Why do you think it's called Faith? And if Faith, why white? I almost see like a, like a dove. Mm, okay. Kind of like it, the covenant with God after the flood. Wow, beautiful. And if it's a dove, maybe that's why it's... It's white. white. That's why it's all white. Okay. And also a dove is a symbol of... Peace. Peace. Wonderful. So I'm gonna give you another piece of information. Um, this sculpture was gifted to the city of Jerusalem in 1984. Why in Jerusalem from all places? Well, Jerusalem has been known as a city of peace, Yerushalayim. Okay, and also? And um, who lives in Jerusalem? Center of the Jewish, you know, it's our, it's our, I don't know, capital, I don't know what you wanna call okay. it. Okay, capital of the it's Jewish our nation. Faith, our, our faith base is there. Okay. And Only also Jews for three, in Jerusalem? no, all, all three religious. All main three religions, three religions are part of Jerusalem and see it as a special holy uh, city. So does the title faith and the idea that it's in Jerusalem change your perspective a little bit? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like the place it should be. <laughs> it's like the right place to be. Yes. yes. Okay. Anyone recognize? <laughs> this is Philip Gaston. Um, Philip Gaston, in my my mind, and I love his things, um, is a artist that was uh, actually born in Canada to Jewish immigrant parents. And then in early age moved to LA. Um, not easy upbringing whatsoever. Um, but in about 1970, he changed his art and made it with a lot of fame icons or symbols that he he refers to them as his language. It's a little hard to, to look at it, but what do you see? Like body parts? Body parts, any particular body parts? Like maybe the vein? I don't know. Maybe veins, okay. I was it also looks really industrial. Yes. Maybe knees or arms or something. Yeah. Maybe arms or legs, or maybe legs that have the knees. What are those ovals or round things? Oh, it's a weird, it's a weird one, Sigal. I, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like like pipe fittings or what feeling does it give you looking at it is it a good look you know feeling like wow that's so cute that's adorable or, or it can be belong to a different religion okay as far as i'm concerned i don't i don't know 
Okay. Not not very pleasant feeling when I see it. When it nice. looks kind of grotesque. It look, <laughs> grotesque is a good word. Absolutely. It, it looks as if it's doing a lot of hard work. <laughs> hard work, yeah. <laughs> what about the colors? Do you associate any of the colors to something pleasant? No, or Not less at pleasant. all. Not really, no. Mm. <clears throat> so overall, it, looking at it, we're wondering what it is, and then we get an unpleasant feeling. Okay, so here we can look and we see better details. It's called the coat, and I think you understand why it's called the coat. What else? Are those like, yeah, are, are those like the shoes? The nice, shoes, or the bottom of the shoes, yes. It looks uh, bloody. Blood, okay. I see, maybe I can see matzah on the like, left side of the coat. Maybe. Like, and and I'm not sure. And matzah might consider the poor people bread, right? No, but maybe it's the Passover story or in maybe. part of it. Oh, nice. Okay. Because it, there is the blood on the water and then there is the matzah and I don't know. It's I. It's hard for me to know to what um, period of time he was referring. Ah, so that's what he wants you. He wants you to relate it to something, and you make your own story. I mean, you know what I have now in mind that it's just like it reminds me of the Holocaust, mm. and and maybe they needed to take their coats off and with all the history. That uh -huh. came and that put came their shoes them. away. Or... Put their shoes away. Have nothing. There is no head because I think maybe a lot of them got lost. And then, then because of all the history that started long time ago, um, when they were in Egypt, and then they took all, all of it with themselves. And this is the price Great. that they so they paid. Sagit took it to her association, <laughs> and what. She my related. Jewish, uh, my Jewish uh, association. Okay, so you brought it to your associate, <laughs> but you looked at it and you said it's not something that is make my makes my eyes, you know, feel comfortable around it. You immediately connected it to other things that you know that might work here. Yes, but it is better for me than the last one of his <laughs> that we saw, because at least I, you know, I understand what I'm saying. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the last one of Philip Gaston. And I'm wow. going to leave you to this. You tell me what you think it is. The hand of God. Maybe a hand of God. Is there some kind of a story or symbols that you read in between the colors and the shapes and the icons here? I'm not sure what he's touching. He ha it looks like maybe a piece of a metal pipe, a small one, maybe a screw of some kind a charcoal maybe oh maybe yeah if you were part of this painting what would you call it god's fingers okay It really leaves us to think what we see and how we refer to it, isn't it? The question is, 
can we call it a Jewish art? This is Judy Chicago. Uh, Judy Chicago, I mean, you can't say that she is not a, a Jewish uh, artist and um, she grew up in a house that wasn't very religious, but her, her grandparents were, uh, her grandfather was a cantor. So she had this coming into her life. Um, and she has a lot of uh, works that work directly with a, a Jewish concept or an idea. But otherwise, looking at this, um, this is a painting that she made um, with another feminist uh, artist that uh, uh, lives in London. And uh, they together made a whole exhibition called uh, Create Art for Earth. So what do you think the, the main concept or value that she wants to talk about in this painting is? Environmentalism. Observation. What clues do you have here to or past and present, or past and, yeah, maybe past and present. Okay. I mean, and, and uh, you know, something that ended, something that is still flourish. So where is earth coming in here? Or the preservation of earth? Maybe it is a criticism. Like, Some kind of criticism that we did what? We logged the forest. We logged the soil. We chopped the trees that we actually live on. We, we almost, we, we chopped what gives us livelihood in many things, in many ways. Is, it, is, is a Jewish concept or a Jewish approach shines through this it's jewish and universal nice okay so maybe because judy uh chicago she was a uh, born cohen judy cohen grew up in a jewish family and heard about it went to a sunday school um knew how Jews uh, treat the environment, how in, trees are important in Jewish life, maybe that brings her to be even a more of a fighting for the environment, fighting for nature. Another one of um, Judy Chicago and I admit, I just love her things. What do you see here? She's dying. End of life, maybe. <clears throat> yeah. Fetal position. So she's saying, will I leave as I arrived? Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? And wow, it is very strong. This at the De Young, it was so good. That's right. That's right. It was fantastic. Um, so, you know, these are anxieties that we all have. How will I, at some point, you know, <laughs> I look at Ava, uh, pretty young, but, you know, at some point we all have to, we, we those thought comes through our mind. Uh, how will I die? And what would I leave behind me? So it's really a very universal, has nothing to do with Jewish. Um, we moved on because I have a time here that I need to go. Uh, this is a Harriet Estelle Behrman. 
and uh, she's actually a local artist. She's here in Belmont. Um, she is known for a very whimsical, I would call it, very fun uh, sculpture, and she make it makes it all from um, post-consumer and uh, recycled household uh, items. Um, but look at this one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jewish. Is it a Jewish art? This is, yes. Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Where that did you see the Jewish it? here? Everywhere. Okay. Do there tell. is a, first, I see the Star of David in the middle. Okay. Uh, second, I see the pomegranate and I see the olives in the, in the different parts. And then there is a, I mean, Shivata Minim, I think, like, and the then seven you see. Spices, spices, yes. Yes. Okay. So there is, I mean, you see it very clearly. This is gorgeous, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, so this is more clear. And the Jewish star is made out of? Gold. It, wait, but look at the three mm, parts of it. Doves? It's not a dove. It's a symbol that we use hopefully every day when we recycle. Do you see the arrows of recycle? Yes. Uh, it goes uh, uh, reuse. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you see it now? Yeah. So she really took the environmental and the recycle concept and put it into a Jewish concept. And we definitely can call it, in my mind, a Jewish art. This is Andy uh, Arnovitz. Um, she has those um, ceramic or porcelain beads um and she has all kinds of things on it like uh facial hair broken glass uh genocide misunderstanding uh date rape dentist lost children what are those beads Are they, do they have to do with like commandments? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe expression to all the hard and bad things that the Jewish people went through at the beginning of the century and the last one. Okay. I so mean, she called it the worry bids. Uh, do we, uh, do we all have worries? Of course not. Of course. So <laughs> do those be bids have to be Jewish worries? They're no. very open, right? So now let me tell you um, about uh, 15 years ago, uh, this lady uh, moved from Missouri. She's an art was artist here in Missouri. Uh, she moved to live in Jerusalem with her family. The question is, knowing that she actually lives in Jerusalem, do those uh, bids make more sense? Is she, does she worry more than I do here? Are those, are those bids are more Jewish worries than regular worries? I don't think so. So let's move on. Um, this is a 
vest that um, Andy Arnovitz uh, made. Can you think what it's made out of? Air? Sounds like an enlargement. Oh wow. oh, wow. What do you think it is? Mezuzot. Mezuzot. Wow. What do you notice? What, what language is there? Hebrew. It's Hebrew. So what she did is she found um, a lot of prayer books old Sidurim, old prayer books, old uh, Bibles that are not mm -hmm. in use anymore, falling apart. And instead of sending them to Geniza, what she should have been done, she took them out and rolled them like the prayer that we have in the mezuzot and made a whole vest out of it wow this is amazing yeah it is. it is very different because it i i mean i thought you're not supposed to do it even so it's uh, i'm yeah. very brave very brave absolutely and she feels that she puts um those books in you know she keeps them together and she like imprints it into a memory for mm -hmm. different lost um communities jewish communities so she like gathered it in a memorial of some kind of lost jews lost communities so we'll remember it's gorgeous is it's absolutely amazing amazing what is, what is the artist's name uh her name is uh arno uh, um, arnov wow because is this the last last slide show we have no, but i'm going to move fast this is barnett newman that i love <gasps> wow this is of course mm -hmm. martha rothko that is absolutely my favorite and this is the last one. And I, and you look at it and you tell me what you see. A paper cut. Paper cuts, right. What kind of paper cuts? Uh, you see the lines of Jerusalem, I think. Mm -hmm. And the, something is written in Hebrew about uh, prayer, big mm -hmm. prayer. Absolutely. So this is Kehinda Wiley. Uh, wow. Kehinda Wiley is in no way Jewish. He's a black artist, was born in 1977 uh, here in the United States. Um, so is that a Jewish art? It involves Jewish elements, but I'm not sure it is Jewish art. Oh, so the story with uh, Kehinda Wiley is that he worked with the Jewish Museum in New York that have few, because not many are left from this craft that was paper cuts. Um, a, it was very common in Eastern Europe to do those uh, cuts and put it as a, as a decoration on the wall uh, to remember the Hebrew, to remember some symbols for holidays, definitely for Sukkot. Not very many of those uh, paper uh, cuts are left, A, because it's a paper and you know, paper, if you don't uh, put it under glass, it's gone. And B, because from Eastern Europe, Europe they were burned um, during the, the Holocaust. Most of it was gone. So they have very amazing uh, paper cuts like this. 
he worked with the museum, he copied it. It's about seven or eight times bigger than the original. The original is about wow. paper size, and this is huge. Now, who's this guy standing right in front of it? It's a Ethiopian Jew. Wow. And this that is gorgeous. brings us again to the keynote. Uh, you know, we all kind, we all can, we come in different shapes and in different colors, and we can be Jews. Um, so, Kehinda Wiley is not Jewish, but is the art itself Jewish? Amazing. Sigal, thank you so much. It was my, fascinating, really. Pl my pleasure. I really want to leave this question if we want to be, if the artists want to be artists or want to be defined as Jewish artists. Amazing. Thank you so much. My I appreciate pleasure. all the hard work you were doing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I, we are moving to the next session. Just make sure that the last one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.